Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. I know I'm having a great day. I've been chomping at the bit to read this story to you. Uh, just a little bit of back backstory to it. Um, this gal sent us the story, which is in episode 97. And uh, everybody really, really enjoyed that episode, by the way. If you want to go back and check it out, we'll wait for you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, she ended up sending us another story. And I was uh, just about ready to put it up for you guys when she sent me an email saying to hold off because she had also sent it to our dear friend over at uh, Dixie Cryptid and he had just read it. So he beat us to the punch. <laughs> anyway, so I held off for, I guess, about uh, a month or so, more than a month, month and a half. So my thinking is that maybe there's a few people that haven't heard it. And uh, hey, it's a great story. So maybe the people that have heard it will enjoy hearing it again. Okay, guys. So how about we sit back, put your feet up, close your eyes and get ready for a super amazing story. Okay, it just starts out. Hi, Leslie. I had to really kick this over in my head before sending this to you because I've already sent an encounter to you recently. I feel like having multiple cryptid encounters is somehow viewed as less than credible by listeners. Nonetheless, I've really enjoyed your channel and I'm willing to put myself out there if it increases our chances of learning more about these beings. Every little bit helps, right? Thank you for taking the time to read this, as I know it's lengthy. I am a 52-year-old mother of three, now grown boys, and my encounter happened almost 20 years ago, but it's as clear in my mind as, it, as if it happened yesterday, and I'm sure it always will be. I've lived my life doing things off-grid, and usually as far out in the wilderness as I can go. I've climbed to the summit of mountains, stayed at the 12,000 foot in a tent by myself for a month in the Sierra Nevadas, and I've slept in the snow just for fun. I'm that woman who usually can't find any friends to go with me camping because no one wants to go in the winter or rough it as far as I go. You would think I'd have an encounter in one of these remote places on one of my excursions, but I didn't. I came across this being right smack dab in the middle of the day, right off the crowded beach full of swimmers in northeastern Washington. My encounter was up close for a few minutes, but lasted at a distance most of the day. I went kayaking with my boys and my sister-in-law and her kids. At the large wilderness lake in the far northeast corner of Washington by the Canadian border. We stopped at the crowded beach at midday so we could eat our lunch and stretch our legs. Both my sister-in-law and I immediately felt extremely uneasy there and we decided not to stay long. She and I joked about there being a serial killer in the area and tried to make light of the unease we felt. But at the same time, we made a point to tell the kids to go in pairs if anyone need to use the outhouse. She and I also went together and I remember feeling like I was going to be pounced on at any given moment. While I guarded the outhouse door for her, it had taken us hours to get there and we were pushing our luck to make it back before dusk. So after the kids had eaten and played in the water a while, she loaded them up in their boats and they all left together. I lagged behind so I could eat my lunch and sneak a much needed cigarette. Once my kids were far enough away to not know what I was doing. I didn't intend on being there long, so I just pushed off the shore in my boat and sat a while as I ate and had the cigarette. I noticed the beach had emptied of many families who were swimming, and I was completely alone. I remember thinking how odd it was that everyone had just uprooted and left at once. I started feeling scared, so I paddled out a few yards from the beach with the thought in mind that I had more than enough time to get away if a murderer tried to swim out to get me. Funny the stupid stuff that goes through your mind during times like this. I was scared until I noticed off in the distance 
An old man walked down the steep embankment with two small boys ahead of him, and he sat down on a stump under a rope swing, about a hundred yards off the beach. He was watching the two while they were doing what little boys do, tossing stones in the water and playing at the water's edge. They had their backs to him and didn't seem to be paying much attention to him while they played. I decided to sit in my boat offshore about 25 yards to finish my lunch and watch them. I felt safe there for a little while, but the feeling of being watched from some other direction quickly returned and was becoming overwhelming. As I sat there in my boat, I began to let my imagination get the best of me. I began to imagine that there was something dangerous in the water, and I started to think back on stories that my dad had told me of divers seeing sturgeon big enough to swallow a barrel. They may be docile, but the thought of even seeing a fish that big was terrifying, and since I had given my life vest to one of the kids, I'm a lousy swimmer, I decided to paddle over to the shore and stay within reach of it while I made my way back around the lake. I kayaked over to the shore and headed in the direction of my family, who were now about a quarter of a mile ahead of me in the big water. I had to pass right by the old man along the way. He was sitting on the shore on what looked like a stump, with his left leg crossed over his right. His hands were clasped over his upper knee, and he was staring at me, slowly circling his foot in midair. As I got closer and closer to him, two little boys had vanished into the trees, and he was still sitting there watching me. I no longer felt uneasy. In fact, I felt safe knowing he had his eyes on me so intently. I thought that if there was something dangerous in the water and I accidentally rolled my boat, he would at least see it and maybe rescue me. He never took his eyes off me, so I waved at him to be polite, but he didn't wave back. I thought, he must not have seen me wave at him. I have to tell your listeners that I assumed he was old because he was wearing a turtleneck sweater and long pants. It was in the middle of August and such a hot day that I figured he must be elderly. As my dad was elderly and had bad circulation, so he always wore clothes that seemed way too warm for the summer. I waved at the elderly man again, but he still didn't wave back. Then I knew he had seen me and he was just being rude. Oh well, I still smiled at him, and since I was only a few yards away and cruising slowly closer, I still wanted to be friendly to this gentleman and let him know I wasn't a threat. I don't remember if I just smiled at him or if I actually said hello as I got closer. I may have, but to be honest with you, I don't remember because I was shocked by what I saw next. On a side note, I don't tell a lot of people the details of this encounter because the ridicule is unrelenting. Had I been terrified by some hideous monster and barely made it out alive, I think people would have accepted my testimony more than they do. That's not what happened, though. Since none of us are experts, I fail to see how we can't all learn from the diversity of these beings. By listening to each other instead of shunning the ones that don't fit the narrative. That's why I'm about to swallow my pride and share with you what I saw. As much as I have to brace myself for the jokes and innuendos, I'm willing to put myself out there just to see if anyone else has come in contact with a being such as this. So here goes. As I approached him, I saw that he was not elderly at all, like I had thought. He was probably only in his mid-forties. His hair was slightly salt and pepper, and his beard had some gray streaks. He was extremely handsome, movie star quality, man with perfect features. I know I was staring at him with my jaw dropped because people that attractive don't show up very often, especially in these parts. He seemed to have a gleam in his eye that suggested he was enjoying my attention of seeing him. One corner of his lips curled up slightly in a subtle smile. He had a strong jaw, 
a perfect narrow nose, high cheekbones, and eyes were almost almond-shaped but not slanted and were a very pretty light brown color that was almost golden. His skin was dark tanned and he looked native, but he had a full, short-trimmed beard. His lips were full, but not leathery or disproportionate. He was absolutely gorgeous. His head was perfectly shaped and his neck was also proportionate to his shoulders and the rest of his body. He wasn't glaring at me. He was squinting from the sun. Even though his eyes were narrowed, I could still tell he had large, very thick-lashed eyes. They weren't overly big or bulging. He had a bit of a prominent brow ridge, but nothing out of the ordinary. If you ever seen the actor Jason Momoa, you'll see he has a pronounced brow ridge that I would compare to this. Yes, I'm going to say it, man. As I passed him, literally about seven feet away, I realized I was staring at him. How rude of me. So I averted my eyes. It was then, in the split second I looked away, I noticed that he was not wearing a turtleneck, but was completely covered in thick, silver-tipped brown hair. Immediately, I looked back over at him. He was not wearing any clothes at all, but was completely covered in short, glossy, clean-looking hair. I was close enough that I could tell what direction it grew in. Had he not been covered in hair, I would have thought I had a chance meeting with a movie star or a Hollywood model. He was absolutely stunningly masculine and a literal example of a perfect human male. As my kayak slowly cruised in front of him, I know it was my turn to stare blatantly. His shoulders were very broad and his chest muscles and biceps were well-defined. But not freakish like those goofy bodybuilders who get on steroids. He was strong-looking but not abnormally for his size. I realized I was rude for staring at him, so I looked ahead of my boat for a moment. But then my curiosity got the best of me and I looked back over my shoulder at him. By then, he had stood up and was standing sideways to me facing up the hill, and he had reached over his head to swipe a branch out of his face. He had to have been at least eight feet tall, and he was so muscular I could see his muscles rippling beneath his hair on his bicep and thighs. He was surreal. I wasn't afraid. I was just stunned, and my only thought was, what kind of skin disorder is that? Why was a nudist living clear out here in the middle of the wilderness? By the way, I didn't see any genitalia. I wasn't looking for that because I was already embarrassed by staring at him once I realized he was naked. Anyway, a little while later, I glanced back over my shoulder again and he had completely disappeared into the trees. By the time I caught up with my family, my sister-in-law brought to my attention there was a hunter walking up the top of the mountain in a huge open clearing alongside of me. I was in the water, and he was about half a mile away, as the crow flies, above me on the steep mountain. He kept up with my boat and walked, looking down at the mountain towards me every few seconds. For the rest of the day, he was far enough away, his body hair looked like clothing again, even from that far away. None of the others noticed anything abnormal about him, except that they noticed he kept looking down at me as he walked. I can't imagine how fast he had to be traveling to make it to the top of that steep mountain in enough time to get to the grassy summit at the same time I passed in my boat. He was there, though, and we watched him keeping up with me effortlessly. I lost sight of him when the high mountain meadow dropped back into the trees on the other side of the peak. By the time I was loading up the boats in my truck, It was almost dark and we were exhausted. I kept catching myself stopping and looking up at the darkness of the tree line at the edge of the lake because I could not shake the feeling of being watched. Even though I didn't see him, I knew he was there in the trees still staring at me. I didn't tell the others that day what I saw because they would have laughed. My kids know now what happened. But at the time, I didn't say anything, and they do believe me because they have had their own sightings 
at other places. I couldn't get my encounter out of my mind. I never once thought he was a Sasquatch. I honestly thought he was an attractive man with some kind of skin disorder that caused excessive hair, body hair. You see, I didn't believe in Bigfoot. I thought it was a myth, told by the elders to keep the kids from straying too far from camp. I thought I must have come across someone who had the same skin disorder as the wolf boy from the old Barnum and Bailey Circus during the turn of the century. I was curious as I had never seen it in real life before, so I set out to research it. As it turned out, I was pursuing the internet, searching for information when I came across a website that seemed to be an information site. It was a forum for anomalies, and you told them your stories. Maybe they could help you solve your mystery. I posted what I had seen and didn't think anything of it until I got a call just a short while later. This was back when the caller ID boxes that would show you who was calling on your landline. I got this call within an hour of posting it. The caller ID said U.S. government picked it up, not knowing what was going on, and thinking something bad must have happened to a relative. The person who answered told me he was a so-and-so from the department of I can't remember, and he would like to talk to me about the Sasquatch I had seen and written about. I honestly had to ask him who he was again, because the name Sasquatch completely took me off guard. He repeated it, and I instantly realized that I didn't want to talk to him. I panicked, and I hung up on him. He tried calling back several times, but I wouldn't pick up. Did I really hear him say Sasquatch? My curiosity got the best of me, and I began to research Bigfoot and came across the newly organized BFRO. I eventually got up the nerve and told my story. I received a lot of ridicule from Even my sister-in-law, who claimed all I had seen was a hunter and to quit being a ninny, of course. So I was hell-bent on finding anyone I could talk to who would believe me. At that time, the BFRO seemed to be the most trustworthy source. So I told them my story and I wasn't long before I was asked to be interviewed on several Bigfoot radio stations and speak at several conferences. In fact, I was supposed to speak at another conference this coming weekend, but it was canceled due to COVID-19. I would just like to say this. The man I saw was just that. He was a man. He was not an ape. He was intelligent. And even though he hadn't spoken to me, I could tell he had a personality and a soul. And I will admit with all my heart that when I looked into his eyes, I felt like I was looking at someone who was superior to me in intelligence, kind of like a college professor when you're just starting high school. To kill one of them truly would be murder, and I feel sick to my stomach to think that there are those who are calling for a body to give them empirical evidence to the existence. For those of us who have come in contact with them, we have all the empirical evidence we need. They are real, and there are many more of them there than we realize. Since this first encounter, I've had several more brief ones that would probably be boring to your listeners, but encounters nonetheless. I don't know if this being was stalking me out of curiosity or some other reason. We don't know enough about them to be certain. I guess our only information comes from people like you and I, who pool our encounters together on forums such as this and glean from each other the traits we witness from these beings. I often think about that hairy man I came to face to face. Was he a Sasquatch, as the government worker called him, or did I come across some other being? He certainly wasn't the malevolent ape-looking animal I pictured in my head. I've heard of modern-day Neanderthals existing in remote locations. Could he be one? I also think about the two little boys who were standing right next to him and wonder about them as well. They had their backs to him the whole time they played at the water's edge. 
Couldn't they see him, or was he somehow invisible? He sat watching them the way a loving grandpa would watch over his family. My biggest question about them is this. Who were those two little boys? They vanished before I could see them up close. Were they his? Thank you for reading my story. I realize it's different for most encounters, and I'm going to get flack for it, but it's worth it to me to see that there are others out there who have had similar encounters with ones who are more human than animal. Sincerely, Perplexed in the Northwest. Wow. You know, I've read that story probably about five times now, Um, and I just enjoy it more and more every time. It's difficult for me to say one way or the other. Um, It's very possible that you witnessed a creature that was more human than animal. But I also believe that many of these have the, the ability to be very, very dangerous. And many of them have the ability to be compassionate and caring. So... I can't tell you one way or the other, but that's my opinion. I think there's a vast array of them just like there are human beings. So I guess that's uh, where I'm going to leave that. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed the story too. I hope to see you all back here in a couple of days. Bye for now.